Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the European Group Fight series, season four. And here we are again with some of the best meleeers in the community to fight it out for the glory of being number one, P1. So, you've got the various arenas, as you can see. There's Coco Touch there, and there's Natsu, and these are all familiar names. There's Coco Touch in there, Siom as well. And who have we got over here? There's Shade, Shady, we'll call him Shady. There's Higaned, there's a name we recognise. There's Drened, Smallstead. It's probably going to be one, yeah, Shaded. And, yeah, there's a lots of deads. Axiom as well. So I'm surprised there isn't one called Homestead, but, yeah, okay. And it's first to five in this initial round. So we look over on arena number three. And we see Snappers. There's Dark Templar. There's Bounty, Bounty Rigel. We call him Bounty. There's the Joker. There's Chuckster. And Barrow. And look at Chuckster. Look at that face. And they're underway. So you can see them starting to Im immediately separate out. Oh dear. Not looking good for the snappers here. They've lost a man on the right side. And now they're starting to have to rotate around. But they've managed to equal it up on one side. But they're still down to 4v3. If they all oh, correction, 4v, uh, 3v3 I should say. Now it's 3v2 and snappers are turning it around here on Arena 3. And you can see them starting to make their way through. And just literally sigh through their opponents, which is what they've done. So, wow. That was Kamikaze. Finished off as we move over to Arena 2 to say hello to Regrouped or Repooped. Um, and there's Coco Touch in there as well. And here's Dreaded from Regrouped. Now, these guys, obviously, a lot of named players in here that we recognize so a pretty good skill ceiling but at this moment they're on the back foot and it's a 3v2 uh, uh, 4v2 correction it's now a 3v1 the question is whether Hignead no no that was uh, yeah it's just you just can't block that many flurries of stabs that are coming in your direction we move over to Arena Numero Uno and see here, Black Knight says Core. There's a name we recognize, of course. And NSS Flow, another name. There's Fenton. And Lewis, or Louis, depending on your point of view. And Pirates, Mask Man, and Jan. Now, opposing them in Arena One is the Black Knight. There's Movement. The dead D Morgan is Blackbeard and Catastrophe or Catastrophe. So we're just going to watch them briefly on arena number one. And you can see them immediately start to separate out as we always see in these events. And immediately you see them focus down multiple people onto one. And that's what they do. Overcome them with sheer weight of numbers and stabs. As we move over to arena number four, it's the crappers. There's Fralla. There's a name we recognize from a long while. Oh, fine attempt at a kick, but sadly for him, Amu was there ready and quite literally kicked the crap out of him. So, you have obviously the admins who are going to be looking after things and shouting out results etc so we're going to keep an eye on how things are going there's snappers moving back to their finishing position so looking ready for looking good for snappers at the moment there we go a4 is now go here we go in arena number four the crappers, there's Ricky over on the left-hand side. Oh, he's lost his teammate on the right. 
This is a bad situation for the crappers. It's quite literally going down the crapper. Oh, goodness me. This is not good. And Mew is having to defend himself against 3v2 or 3v1. And sadly for him, it was not to be. Just, just impossible. F wow. 5-0 to the snappers. So that's a, uh, a very dominant display by them. So they've always proven to be tricky to play against. Definitely not to be counted out. Good melee material, I think you could say. We're here with Ricky on the crappers. He's lost his teammate in the middle. They're now down a man. Immediately you can see the line start to rotate to try and cover the left side. And trying to contain them, but also then trying to envelop their enemy at the same time. And this is the problem that they've got, especially as they're down a man. Correction, the numbers have been equaled up. And correction again, the numbers are now, look at that, splitting off. And sadly for the crappers, they were not able to hold Renaissance back. And that's always going to be the problem. Is, you know, once those numbers change, once the, the picks have been got, it's going to be a very, very difficult job to hold them back. You just can't melee, you can't block and you can't parry or repost. Um, that many stabs it's just yeah outside of the game engine physical impossibility etc etc I mean you don't try and you know throw a pebble at a har um, combine harvester it's not going to stop it and the effect is pretty much the same so oh nice stab in the center there that was Natsu from Coco Touch being taken down then Sion gets mullered and Masquez and all the rest of them get finished off by regrouped. Wow. And you can see they're Renegade versus Snappers. In come Coco Touch. One of the newer teams from what I understand. Let's see. Great names these guys have. Just fantastic. Love it all. Against them is regrouped. These guys, yeah. I mean, they're just a powerhouse of big name melees. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a rough, a rough battle for anybody against these boys. Because they've proven themselves to be damn good. Oh, look at that! And then immediately, that was a really nice. Touch there by Komar from Coco Touch. Lost one of his teammates, but managed to dive in there and get a stab to re-equal the numbers. But now they're still they're still equal, 3v3. Looking for that all important maybe picking a center, but they will be so careful not to overreach. And that's exactly what happened. Over there on the left flank. Overreached and got jumped on. A quick stab, a quick pick coming in there, finishing him off. And yeah, there wasn't really much he could do under the circumstances. A tad unfortunate, but them's is the breaks. This is, this is what the strategy is all about. It's all about essentially trying to make the enemy fight on your terms as opposed to on theirs. And that can be done by a, n a number of factors, you know. The enveloping of the line, the all-important first pick, which can... Sometimes, in some cases, it can turn the tide of the battle or the match um, to the point where it means that the, the team that got the first pick will be in a position to try and exploit that difference in numbers and push hard. But if you're up against a team of very, very good players, getting the first pick does not necessarily mean you'll win that round because they could quite easily just step it up a gear and start murdering your teammates. And before you know it, it's all over and you've lost the round. And so, as with everything, complacency is always a bad thing. You don't get too comfortable. You don't get too cocky. Because they can always come back and bite you in the arse. As invariably it tends to. I've seen it so many times in so many different games. Oh, some people derping out over here. 
So Arena 1 is now underway. You can see a oh, fine stab on the left there. Coming in. Oh, goodness me. We see Dragon Oh, Emboz. There's a name we recognize. And, of course, Ricky from the Crappers. And look at these guys. 3v3. And look at the way that the line is moving. And they're trying to get in for that all-important first pick. And look at the way that one side of the line pulls back while the other side of the line pushes. And maybe occasionally you get one in the center. Try and get a pick if you can. See, look at them. Look at the way. It's like a dance. It really is. It's amazing to watch. Oh, and there's that important pick. Now, the question is whether or not these guys in the blue renaissance can make the most of this opportunity they've got to be careful because they lose one of their own it's then equal numbers look at this guys all oh, split out into 1v1 and 2v1s and that's really not worked out for them oh look at this this is exactly the kind of turnaround that i was telling you about and frala there and his teammate emboz Pulling it out at the back of the round. That was that was quite fraught for a minute. I thought the crappers were in danger of being taken over. And yeah, they turned it around. So well played to them in that particular round. Obviously, only a first of many rounds. So we'll see. Chuckster. And Barrow. And there's the Joker. And you can see there's also multiple members in the spec who are essentially either commentating or they are, what's the word I'm looking for? Substitutes for the match. So sometimes, because obviously all this mouse moving and keyboard, you can get pretty sweaty. And so sometimes it's a case of if somebody's been playing so long that they're starting to get tired going to affect their performance and so you swap them out in the classic substitution vein to try and keep the advantage fresh with your team or your squad in this case now look at this in the center here you can see snappers have the disadvantage they've lost a man so it's a 5v4 situation now it's a 5v3 situation and renegades are going to try and push that advantage very quickly because what they could do is they could separate out into a 2v, 2v1 and a 3v1 and push home that advantage. And that's exactly what they did, really. So basic strategy right there, boys and girls. Along with uh, the odd suicide here and there. Arena number two seems quiet. Arena number, numero uno. Kamikaze Smiley. Up against NSS. It's flow. It's flow again. Look at that. Lewis, calm. Ready for the off. And away they go. So you can now see here. As the the line is starting to move. Oh, one of them got hit on the right side. But he managed to turn it around into a pick at the same time as they lost one of their teammates over on the left hand side. Now it's a two, or a three, V3. And this next pick could be important. There we go, that's a pick on this side. And immediately they start to push home the advantage. Two focus down onto one, one hold. Did you notice that? that the 2v1 basically focused their attention on him while the other guy literally played a holding pattern, almost literally tying him up until his the other opponent was dead and then they could move over. And finish off the remaining man. These are the kind of strategies that you see in these sort of games. And you know, obviously with the voice comms and all the rest of it. They're all going to be working it all out while they go. You know, they may change strategy on the fly. To deal with the fact that they've just lost a man in the centre. But they've managed to even it out again. With a double teaming there. Oh wow. Yeah, RT, Fieta, Shipe. Jakob, of course, with that fine beard. Doesn't he look handsome? And Geha. So these boys ready to go. 
And of course, they are facing against the Crappers, Emboss, Fralerate, Amu, Lord, Lordy X, we call him, and Porkins. Stay on target. And they've lost one in the center, the opposing number. This is an opportunity here now for the Crappers to push the advantage, but they've now lost a man. And immediately you can see the line starting to circle around as it flows and a nice stab on the right hand side coming in for the Crappers. Now you can see 4v3 situation. They start to double team into a single man. He gets himself out of position. He doesn't have the cover of his teammate and that's the opportunity they're looking for. Oh, look at that. Wow, the Crappers turning it around and managing to get a team kill out of it as well. That's going to go down well. Look at that. He's Oh, look at that. Oh, Lordy X with a fine kill into the enemy. But sadly, at the end, he was overcome. But that was really well played there. Some great skills being shown. We move over to arena number three to say hello to the Renegades. It's Baggins or Baggins. I think Baggins is definitely the, the right term. Oh, hello. Okay, well, either way, he's not Baggins anymore. He is now an ex-Baggins. Oh, there he is. The man who's running it all. Mr. Voluble. With the most normal face in the entire server. I mean, just look at some of these examples of genetic defectives that are the faces of some of these players. They're the kind of face only a mother could love. So let's watch them as they face off against the snappers. And they've lost a man in the center. That was voluble. Bloody hell, that was voluble. Now, 4v3. So we follow them. And they're getting painted into a corner. This is a very dangerous situation for them. For exactly that reason. But can they turn it around? It's going to be impossible, sadly, for them. As you can see, the snappers push their advantage as best they could. Five to two snappers. Good stuff indeed. There's Gibby. So arena number three will be NSS versus the Renegades. And arena four is set to go. So here we fly over to arena number four. And keep an eye on the crappers. Who are doing a good job of murdering their opponents in RT. Is Jakob looking to defend himself from that nasty pick on the left side. Working together with his teammate, but no, got taken roughly from behind. Oh dear, that's the last thing you want on a Sunday night without even offering you flowers first. It's just rude. But never mind. It's just one of those things that, you know, a lack of numbers really can kind of affect the way that your strategy is working and sometimes you just can't hold off enough stabs to try and survive. It's just a flurry of stabs and murdering. And it's just unfortunate. That is the reality of the situation. But it's always great to see melee skills. Oh dear. There's Mark Seal and uh, Arch going down in Renaissance. And we've lost Jakob as well. There's Gerher. And there's Shipe. And there's Fieta. So. As he pauses to adjust. Because otherwise you get a numb bum doing this. What can I say? The life of a caster. Anyway. So Arena 4 continues. Arena 3 with NSS. Versus. The Renegades. There's Bagans and Gibby. And High Reaper. All names we're very familiar with. And so A3 is off. Look at this. Oh, they've lost a man in the centre. 
And now they're pushing the advantage. Look at the way they are just... Oh dear, they're just flooding into areas and just trying to envelop the enemy as best they can. And look at the way that they're just being very, very sneaky. Fenton here from NSNS. Doing a great job of surviving. There's a flurry of stabs coming in. And sadly, it was not to be. As Renegades finished off the remaining members. So, we're back in with Coco Touch. Oh dear. He does not look well. As Sion, quiet, pensive, waiting for the off. That nervous energy that is... The Napoleonic Wars melee player. Another man of an example of a face. Looks like he's been smacked in the face with a shovel. But hey ho. Yeah, one of the one of the one of the regiments spares there basically waiting to take over from one of his teammates when his teammate needs a break. So here in Arena 2. It's Coco Touch versus Renaissance. Oh, Mark's now getting taken down. And now Coco Touch has started to envelop the enemy. And this is going to be a bad situation for them. And so it proved to be. So. Moving over to Arena 1 NSS. Getting ready to go. Against Renegades again for the next round. Let's wait and see. High Reaper waiting. And they're off. There's Gibby. We're going to watch on the right flank as these guys move up. Now you notice their opponent is being sort of... You can see the way that the, the two guys in the set, especially the one in the center, sort of flows from left to right to try and make the line as wide as possible. And now when they've lost a man, that immediately means that their line starts to collapse and in on itself. And now this is interesting because they went from a 4v2 situation to a 3v2 situation. Well, it was actually more of a sort of 5v4. And now it's all been trimmed down and they're trying to be as spiky as possible. That's going to be a problem. And now he's going to have to try and defend from those flurry of murdering uh, stabs. And sadly, it was not to be. So, this is why the numbers are so important. And that's always nice to see in competition. GG's between players. So, over here on arena number one. Kamikazes. Renaissance and regrouped on the, uh, arena two. And here we are, the Black Knights, says Kor, the dead Morgan, and the movement. Oh, it's just that. Just got distracted some uh, for a second. Shiny things, as is, as is the norm. And you can see now immediately the, uh, the Brits are in trouble as Black Knights finishing off the remaining players. So we'll have to wait and see. Over here on arena number three, it's down to a man versus man. Flow versus volleyball. Well, this is going to be tricky. Volleyball is no pushover. And there we so he proves to be. The mellow juggernaut that is volleyball. Not sure you'll appreciate me calling him that, but hey ho. Never mind. I won't have to take him on in the melee field. That's for damn sure. I'm not that dumb. I mean, I can't even melee him away out of a wet paper bag. So, taking on some of the best in the uh, in the community would be a tad unwise. Mind you, it wouldn't be the first time I've done something stupid. But anyway. Hey. So it looks like they've lost Shady on the uh, left-hand side of Regrouped. And now, 
They've lost another one. Hertzed. Hertzed has come in as well. That's another name we recognise. And here's Axiom. The late Axiom. Oh, and Hig has managed to dodge inside that force a team kill on his enemy. And now it's Maxil versus Higgined. Watching him, this is no... Oh, look at that fine parry there and the block he does. Oh, that's just beautiful to watch. A thing of beauty to watch Higgined in action. Look at the way they're doing that. Oh, it's just... It's poet Kinetic poetry is what this is, boys and girls. And notice he backs off to then come back in. Look at this. Oh, there is an important stab into his enemy. That's going to maybe give him a little bit of a uh, advantage. If only psychologically. And you can watch here as Hignet's going in for those all important. Oh, that part. Oh, look at that. An opportunistic kick in the knackers and then a stab to the chest. Yeah, just to add insult to injury. Your nuts are sore and then you get stabbed as well. Just, yeah. A bad day at the office. But, you yeah, know, that's what you get when you take on Hignet. No surrender. No retreat. So. As we watch volleyball. With some nice hair today. But obviously made an effort, which is always a nice thing to see. You know, he's going out in the town, so to speak. Even though this town is in the middle of a blooming desert. With the baking heat. And what looks like a Japanese garden nearby. So here's the final. This is the final arena. Where they'll drop down for the final battle. And I don't know why, but it always ends up that the the platform where they celebrate their win is always in the shade always i don't know how it happens and it makes my thumbnails very very dark but you know that's my problem so renaissance on the back foot oh correction no it's actually all equal Correction, now they're on the back foot. Now they're most definitely on the back foot. And now they're dead. Back foot or otherwise. So. Regrouped. Oh, goodness me. Coco touch up against RT. They've just got three kills in succession. And he's Renegade. They're up against the NSS. There's Lewis. Over on the left-hand side, and they've lost a man in the centre. And now you can see, look at that, separating off into individual 1v1s. And there we go, pushing that advantage to try and kill the extra man on one side. And it looks like NSS managed to push that advantage quite well. And they managed to get that round away from their opponents. So just to give you an idea of what some of these tactics are that they're employing. It's interesting to see. Well, it's interesting to me, anyway. Hopefully it's interesting to you. So. Let's move over. Arena. Number two. Renaissance. Still fighting. Oh, this could be a... Oh, yep, yeah, there's Hertz coming in for regrouped. Coming in as a... Uh, Replacement, Ignad, Troisted, and Axiom had all big names, and away they go. Let's see if we can get a good look on them. And you can see it's a 5v4 situation, so... They've lost a man already. And that's going to be a problem for them. 
And they're looking for that. And he's got to be so careful. Oh, look at that on the right side. They've lost two men in quick succession. And this is now an opportunity for them to wipe out the remainders. And that's exactly what Renaissance did. So good play there by Renaissance. Up against Regrouped. Renegades versus BK. In arena number one. Here in arena number three. There's NSS. Who are going up against the Snappers. So. I may have to pause briefly to grab a drink. Because there's one thing that uh, when you spend this much time talking, your throat dries out after a while. And it's just, you know, one of those things. You get used to it. But it also means you need to wet your whistle quite often. So, let's see. Renaissance Twister. Going up against Axiom and they've lost a man in the middle. Regrouped have lost a man in the middle. But it's, yeah, now they've lost two men. But it's a 3v3 situation. And they're starting to push the advantage until the advantage got pushed back at them. And Renaissance managed to turn it around. And get that round. So. Let's see what happens when we move over to arena number three. Where Snapper's Dark Templar. Is locked in a 1v1 with his opponent Lewis. Look at that. Turn and a stab. And poor old Lewis couldn't hold him off forever. As the rest of the team came charging in like a runaway steam train. And completely flattened him. Who's surrendering already? Oh. Anton is over in the corner. On good behaviour. As his teammates are fighting Renaissance. And the Renaissance is not doing very well at the moment. Twister's taken down. And the final member of their team has been finished off. Hello. Lewis. In a 2v1 situation here. And so they're feeling quite happy there. I would say. Hurrah indeed. So, there's High Reaper from Renegades getting ready to go here in arena number one against the Black Knights. There's Blackbeard with a singularly lack of Blackbeard. Yeah, I should take him to the Advertising Standards Authority for that alone. But never mind. Let's see how they fare. You can see them. See the center of the line flowing back and forth and now has opened up allowing them to actually separate out the remaining members of the team and essentially finishing them off. Which is exactly what happened to the Black Knights there. The Renegades brutal in their flocking to a single man and then brutally murdering him. But, you know, them's is the brakes, so to speak. So, hmm. well, we seem to be in the middle of a group of hills. Where do they find these places? It's mad. Completely mad. So, NSS and his Barrow for Snappers and Chuckster. Oh, fine stab by Chuckster. And the enemy tried to dive inside to get his, enemy, his opponent, but Chuckster managed to stab him in the bottom and finish him off and win that round. And so Arena 1 is underway. You can see here the numbers on the floor. Arena 1 continuing. You can see here the stabby goodness occurring. 
as we are now watching Renegade again victorious oh dear a team kill that's not going to go well oh and Hypno from Coco Touch brutally murdered and the crappers there's Emboss and here's Blitzkrieg Another team, another man we remember. There we go. So they're getting themselves ready for their next fight. And this is where they all spawn. They separate out to their various arenas for their fights. And there we go, GG's. Five to one snappers, wow. Snappers proving themselves to be on form today. We're watching Hertz. Nice stab, sir. Waited, patient. Look for the opportunity to go in and make the stab. That's exactly what happened. And there we go. Five to four. Quite close, right to the end. Always good to see. Oh, pausing. To stretch. Oh, that's better. Ah. This here is Coco Touch Coco. Along with other members of Coco Touch. <gasps> and Blitzkrieg. And the recently deceased Darky. And there's Krembit. Crappers blame Krembit. And Ricky, of course. There's Fralla. Look at that face. Ye gods. Lord the X waiting to be called as the replacement if needed. So, arena number four underway. Let's watch them. Way to see them. Look at that line starting to. Uh, Break up a little bit as the centre pushed a little bit too far and got punished for it. But here on the right flank, they're starting to punish back in return. Trying to separate out the numbers into separate sections. But they've managed to get in, push through the centre and stab their way out of it. And now they're in a situation where it's a 2v2. And the next pick is going to be very important for this round. Look at this. There's that stab. There's the stab, very important, that helped them finish it off. And so a fine finish there by Coco Touch. As we move over to say hello, what's going on over here to... Oh, Blackbeard, who's setting up again. So, regrouped. Going up against RT. So, get her. Oh, God, it's him. Yeah, the melee nutcase that is, of course, Dommy. This will be entertaining to see, as always. Mad love for Dommy. Dommy. Great player, great guy. And that's all. Oh, that's the limit of the nice things that I'm going to say about him in this cast. Everything else, obviously, will be completely disparaging. So, Achilles. Get here. Shipe. And Fieta, 888. Mustn't forget the 888. Clearly it's important. I apologise for the yawning, but I'm an old man and I need my sleep. So, fine stabbing coming in there. And these guys doing a great job and he... Oh, look at that! Dove through the middle of them to stab Dommy right in the gizzards. Oh well. Oh dear. 
Never mind. On Arena 3, Black Knights up against Snappers. There's Nightwing, another name we recognise. And now you can see the numbers are in the advantage of the Snappers against the Black Knights. So, let's see what happens. Regrouped. There's Hertz trying to defend himself. Let's look at the numbers. Oh, they've lost one. There we go. They're starting to merge in and push in and, yeah, just do horrible, horrible things with bayonets to the enemy. And so another round on the board for those guys. Aside from the fact that... Uh, Antonet can't seem to get out. Uh, there's something going on on here. <laughs> Jacob laying down the law. Followed by a quick suicide. <laughs> oh goodness me. You see that? That was very quick. The Black Knights making quick work of their opponents. The Snappers all being snapped in every direction. But it looks like here the Firefly has managed to pull back a little bit of honour, so to speak, by defending himself from the enemy. If he... Oh, but sadly he was unable to break the 2v1. We're in with Higginhead and regrouped. And now you can see, oh, poor old Hig got taken down. That's RT. Oh dear, followed by a mass suicide. So we're following Blackbeard. Just to see what he's up to. Out on the town. Going out for a quick grab and stab. As you do. And they've quite literally grabbed and stabbed. So Black Knight's successful there. And, oh dear. One thing that happened, I don't know if this happens with anybody else. But when you yawn a lot, my eyes really water. So it looks like I'm bursting into tears when in fact all that's happening is I'm tired. It's very strange. Oh. Pausing to cough me guts up, always lovely. Obviously I muted myself to uh, prevent you guys from sharing in that lovely experience. So we shall move on and follow RT going up against God damn the yawns, man. Hurts. Unfortunately, couldn't hold off the enemy for that long. The two stabs for the price of one, including coupons, always tends to get there, man. So, the dead Morgan, quite literally now living up to his name, as the remaining man gets stabbed out of the eye, out of the sky. And that was Snappers, I believe. Yes. Going up against Black Knights. 5-3 Snappers. So it's still pretty close. There's no... No one running away with it yet. So. We shall wait and see. Hurts. And now his team is down by two men. Well, there we go. We're down by Hertz now as well. So we're now down by two men. We were down by one man. And there we go. Some stabbing goodness going in. Look at this. 
Lovely stuff coming in as Hignet is trying to defend him. Oh, look at that double block by Hignet. Oh, that was just pure beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But sadly, it was not to save him from the imminent death and splatterization that was to occur seconds later. Never mind. Oh, there's Troisted. Oh, my God, that face. Ye gods. That's a nose you could ski down right there. Another another face. Oh, Hignet. What a face there. I swear these some of these guys just do random and try and choose the most ridiculous na uh, na noses and faces. Some look like they've been smacked in the face with a shovel. Some look like cousins of the result of cousins marrying. I mean, it's just yeah. It's some scary faces you get to see in the Napoleonic Wars, that's for sure. And so Arena 2 is underway with Fieta from RT and they're shaded from regrouped. And it looks like they've lost uh, Hertz and Hignet. Oh my goodness. RT going ham. Wow. RT really took it to them there. And they're now leaving now the arena and we're returning... Good stuff. And there we go. Crappers versus Grouped. On arena number four. Oh, they're back from back from trick or treating already. Oh wow. <laughs> Fiat couldn't find any keys to steal. Oh dear me. Gotta love the banter amongst these guys. Just fantastic fun. So. Hmm. Let's wait and see. Oh, what's going on over here? He's on the fence, quite literally. Oh, that looks painful. That's <laughs> what happens when you find people with a lot of spare time. So Arena 1 is off. And this is RT. There's Achilles. And Renaissance. Oh goodness me, look at RT. Doing a number on their enemy. Narrowed. Achilles. Gerha. And Dummy. Look at that face. Wow. Okay, well then. And that was an unfortunate team kill coming in there. A regroup taking advantage of that team kill to finish off their enemy. Arch. There's Jacob. Number nine. Where are the other eight? Obviously, quite a family, the Jacobs. Quite the dynasty. See if the dynasty can survive. Find stabbing coming in there. And finally, the last man is finished off. And RT winning another round. Oh dear. 
God damn it, yawning, it's just endless. Endless, I say. And it's going to get to the point where my eyes are going to water so much, I won't be able to see the damn screen. Which is just annoying. But, you know, what can you do? Never mind, eh? Oh, hello. Anton. Hurts. Smalls. Are his eyes looking in the same direction? I'm not sure they are. Questionable. But I suppose that helps with his peripheral vision, you know, if you can see them coming from the side. There's a man with a uh, very small bike, a very large exhaust, and an even smaller penis drives by my house. I don't get it. Something I don't understand. I mean, I had I had motorbikes in my youth. The last bike I had was an 1100cc. And I never felt the urge to put a loud exhaust on it. I like the fact that it used to just purr. It's like, are you compensating for something? You know, trying to make the world pay attention to how awesome you are by having a very loud exhaust. No, all you do is set off car alarms and piss people off. But maybe that's what you want to do. But either way, it doesn't make it any less pathetic. But that's just me. Uh, yeah, it, it used to happen when I had my motorbike at the traffic lights. I'd just sit there with the arms crossed. No need to, because the it was just ticking over. And somebody on a 50cc motorbike or scooter would come driving up to me and start revving his engine. And it just sounded like an angry bee had escaped. And you just look at this guy and you think, well, why even bother? Because I can go faster than you in first gear. So why would I even bother to race you? The fact that he thinks he could beat me just goes to show how stupid he was. But, you know, testosterone poisoning is a terrible thing. Especially when linked to ego. So... The murdering continues as Crapper's Lordy X is very quickly finished off. Hertz also gets murdered. And now Crapper's are doing a number onto uh, Drenhead there. As RT looks to have finished off their opponents. They've now left the arena in a very dirty state. I can't believe they didn't clean up after themselves on the way. I mean, that's just, it's just rude, if you ask me. I mean, the least you could do is, like, drag the bodies away, stack them in the corner for later, you know, removal. But, no. Oh, they don't even clear up after themselves. Oh, dear. The nervous energy that is the Napoleonic Wars melee community continues to manifest itself. See what I mean? Something they just can't stand still. It's just not in their nature. They don't know how to do it. And so arena number four is underway. As Porkins. He's lost a teammate in the middle. This could be a problem for them as crappers are in danger. Yep. Oh, but they managed to kill, get one kill. And tail now they've lost them. And it's a 4v2 situation, so the crappers are right literally in the crapper. It's a 3v1. Can he survive? Sadly, Freller fighting for his life. He couldn't survive much longer. Never mind. So. And away he goes. Yeah, that's... Just strangeness. So let's just check all the other arenas. See, they cleaned that one. They cleaned that one. Now, it could be that this is the maid's day off. And there's nobody to clean up this arena. But yeah, nobody made the effort. So this must be the last 
of the early rounds with crappers and regrouped as we watch H Hignead, the 243rd. Obviously, from a long line of Hignets. Proud French family, no doubt. Not sure about the uh, the DNA in that family that produced this, but you know the skill can't be denied. Even though the looks leave something to be left for further work, let us just say. Never mind. See, a lot of twitching going on. So, arena number four is underway. And this is the thing, I mean, occasionally it would be nice to clean because it's easier to see the movement of the players with respect to the strategy. And you can see it's a 4v4 situation. Now it's a 4v3. Correction, no, it's a th uh, 4v1. Oh, this is going to go bad. But they managed to get a team kill out of it on Lordy X. Until finally, poor Higned was failed. Anybody not playing, go to spec. <laughs> I love it when they do that. It's just great. Okay. So, we're waiting for the off. And regrouped against the Crappers. Let's see if we can get above them. Get an idea how it's going. Now, the thing is, you watch some of this. Oh, crikey. They've lost two of the Crappers over on one side. This is now an opportunity. Oh, they're going to get steamrolled. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Is that if you watch from a player's point of view, the camera moves around a lot because they're moving the mouse because of the, the movement, you know, the stabs and the parries and all the rest of it. And it can get a little bit disorientating. And so it's easy, you don't get the, the feeling of the individual melee combat when you're looking over their shoulder. But you do get to see the overall strategy of the squads as they fight it out. So I suppose it's just a different viewpoint on the battles that you would have if you were looking at a player's point of view. So we are underway. And now you can see, oh crikey, two of the crappers lost. And now it's a 3v3 situation. Yeah, they're a pig in a century to Lord X from uh, Troisted. Very important pick there. Now it means that the crappers are on the back foot. Look at that, and then another man lost, and it looks like, oh, it's Krembit. He's taking the blame and he's taking all the 17 inches as well. And sadly, that was to be it for them. And a nice round of mass suicide to end it there. Oh dear. So, we're going to pause and see if we can get the The doodah on the thingy. Now we're going to try and get an idea of the uh, remaining teams. And so we have returned, and here is so we've got round table RT versus Kamikaze. We've got Renegades versus Regroup. That's going to be very interesting. We've got Snappers versus Crappers. So it's a lot of, lot of apping going in in that, in that battle. And Coco Touch versus NSS. So. That's how things look right now.
So, there's a good chance these quarters will all be fought at the same time. We'll wait and see what happens. As the standard punch up begins. So, there you have it. And of course, if we look at the actual, the challenge as it's known, this is probably a better way to see it. We shall accept all the cookies. Yes, we agree, go away. So there we can see, and we can just do a, you know, one of those wonderful things, F5, refresh, as it goes through, and then we can see so obviously round one and then the semi-finals because who doesn't like a semi and then we get on to the finals and then of course the bronze match so it's going to be interesting to see how things go in that regard and so obviously thanks to voluble for inviting me along to commentate on these fine players and this competition and obviously to all to voluble and all the admins for running the event as uh it's it's hard work to get this many people into the same server at the same time and actually get it done with any kind of level of finesse. Having been in that position on many a time. And yeah, it's just... Can get silly. But anyway. So here goes on arena number three. It's the crappers and the snappers. Yes, it is. Snappy crappy on the way. And they've lost a man each. Now it's 4v4. And they've lost... Oh, look at that. Another stab and a grab. A quick move in now. It's a 3v2 situation. And look at that. They finished them off. The snappers with the first round on the board against the crappers. Not sure if it's a, what is a round two, it might be first to five again, and then the final may be first to ten. So we'll wait and see. So, over here, it is regrouped versus Renegade, Bagans and Gibby. And golden and voluble. Now, won't earrings get caught? I would have thought there's a certain snagging alert with respect to that. But yeah, you know. Considering they're wearing backpacks and, you know, sashes and all that kind of silly stuff. I don't think earrings would be the primary concern. But yeah, never mind. Oh, goodness. Oh, dear. Let me just hit Reaper. And there we go, Renegades finish off their enemy super quickly. And they now respawn and move in. As we move over to see how things with the Crappers are going against the Snappers. There's Barrow and the Joker are the remaining men for the Snappers. Up against three Crappers. Oh look at that, he goes in for a stab and it cost him. It, despite the fact that fella got a nice team kill onto Emboz. But, you know, at the end of the day, they got the round, which is the important aspect. More murdering occurring over here. There's Dommy from Round Table. And there's Smiley, who's just respawned from Kamikaze. These guys here, Kamikaze, going to have an uphill battle against Round Table. For obvious reasons, because of the the names in that team. So, there's Lewis. 
There's Jan. There's Flo, of course. Who's jumping out here? Fenton. Fenton! And Mr. T. So we're watching them as they get... Look at that! The stab! They got stabbed or hit slightly. Managed to turn it around into an opposing stab onto the enemy. Got the kill. And now it means their side is on the advantage. As they can flatten out. And kill the remaining members. And that's exactly what NSS did. So they're going to be happy with that. We move over. To arena number four. And seeing some gizzard killing. Murdering all the rest of it. From round table. Onto their opponents. So we're just waiting to, for them to off. And there is Lewis. Ready for the off. Over here in arena number two, regrouped. Getting ready to go. As Heard said, how we can have any depth perception with one eye covered is beyond me, but you know, whatever. We'll wait and see what happens. Oh heavens, they've lost a man in the center. That's going to be a problem. That's shady they've lost in the center. And now it's turning into a bit of a rout for them. Yeah. Renegade. Murdering their opponents very quickly indeed. So. The snappers and the crappers. Ready to go. See what I mean about the nervous energy. They want to get in there. They want to get murdering. And they're away. The snappers and the crappers. And look at that. A couple of hits immediately. Onto the crappers on the left hand side. As now that's a problem there for Fralla. And the remaining members of the crappers were. Unceremoniously dispatched with. Oh. Pausing to stretch. Oh boy. That's the thing. I mean, doing these kind of solo casts, you can't, it's, it's easier because you don't have to worry about interrupting somebody or having to hand it over to somebody and all the rest of it. But it can get quite tiring when you're just talking constantly for, it's been about an hour and a half now. So, the snappers and the crappers. Looks like Porkins just got finished off. And Anu is trying to prevent being overrun. But sadly, it was not to be. As the snappers managed to finish them off. And that is the crappers, I think, finished. There we go. 7-1. to one. Snappers win. So, a dominant display by the snappers against the crappers. Unfortunately for them. As my knee is seizing up. Cool. Oh dear, old man alert. Anyway. So. We look here, Renegade Volleyball. Correction, the late Mr. Volleyball. As there's a punch up in the spectator area. Oops. As they always tend to be, a little bit, there's always a bit of violence at an event. You know, it's like being at the football. Anyone who's English can probably understand that. So, Renegade's getting set up to take on Regrouped. And then obviously Round Table. They'll be around here somewhere. This is Coco Touch taking on the fine fellows of NSS. And so you can see these guys who look. So it's Round Table produce. They go to the semi-finals with a dominant display against Kamikaze. Snappers and Crappers move into the semi-final as well. So, looking good there. So obviously Renegades and Regrouped for a place in the semi-finals against Round Table. 
That's going to be a very... I'm suspecting maybe regrouped might take it. But that's going to be a serious semi-final. Snappers against Coco Toucher NSS. Difficult to say who that's going to be. But either way, it's going to be an interesting fight. Because obviously you don't get this far without being at least partly good. Or even completely good. So we'll wait and see what happens. There you go, 6-2. to two. I think that was Coco Touch. We'll see. So Arena 2 is away. Keep forgetting where Arena 2 is. See? Just lost. Completely lost. Regrouped. And the fine fellows of Renegades. Look at this. Regrouped have just lost three men in quick succession. Oh, wow. That's a serious problem for those guys, as indeed it proved to be. Wow. Wow. Oh boy. And so that is Coco Touch versus NSS over. There's Higginhead. Ready for the off. Watching Shady. Oh dear, that's not good. Regrouped have lost Axiom on the left hand side. Very quickly into the round. Can they turn it around? Oh, they have managed to turn it around very quickly with a Troister with a couple of very fast kills. Now it's a 3v3 situation. Look at this. He's snuck in the middle. Oh, that was unfortunate. Hignead got out of position and got punished for it. And now this could be a very tricky situation for Troister. 3v1 situation. And so it proved to be. A tad unfortunate. I don't know why my camera always seems to stop just at that point. I end up flying over here. Maybe it's the uh, filmmaker in me, you know, just wants to make it as a nice a shot as possible. And those can be quite revealing, you know, reveal shots that go over the top to reveal the panorama behind it. The frustrated filmmaker in me, I guess. Axiom. Now, let's just quickly check. There are no other battles underway right now. So this is all to play for. Shady, Regrouped, and Renegades. Let's see how they're looking. And you can see them starting to push them back. As, oh my goodness, they lost one apiece there. Now it's a 3v or 4v3 situation. Now they're just paring down the numbers because they can 2v1 them. And that's going to be that it done there. Even though... Somebody got a team kill, but never mind. So. It's going to be Snappers versus Coco Touch. So Coco Touch. 7-2 versus NSS. So that's going to be a good match there between Snappers and Coco Touch. And obviously Round Table versus the winner of this match here. Renegades and Regrouped. Also going to be very interesting to see how it turns out between these two teams. There's Bagans. Now we've got to watch CEO. Who's on the right? Well, that's Axiom on the right. Shady. Troistered. And there's Voluble waiting for them to just finish off the work. And there we go. GG's. Being offered. So. Arena number three. Coco versus Snappers. That will be the semi-final. So there you have it. Renegades versus Round Table. Arena number one. That's going to be a belter. So. 
Yeah, that one's going to be interesting. This one also, like I said, still going to be interesting regardless. But this one's going to be a hell of a semi-final. I mean, two very, very good teams up against each other. I mean, just look at the scores that are going up against them. So, Renegades. Depends what happens. I mean, obviously, to make it to the final, you've got to be good. But this, whoever wins this battle here is going to be a firm favourite for the final. But we'll have to wait and see. So, it's Coco Touch getting ready to go against the Snappers. And over here, Renegades versus Round Table. There's Achilles, there's Narrowed, Jacob, and over on the right flank is Dommy, who's now been able to grow a moustache, as you can see. After many years of bum fluff, he now has the ability to grow one. So, Captain Bumfluff on the right here, and going to be interested to see how it turns out, as they're going to be up against the likes of High Reaper. Baggins, Voluble, oh blimey, we've lost, we've lost Dommy already, oh come on Dommy, you're not trying, dear oh dear, and now because they've lost Dommy so quickly, that's going to give their enemy an advantage which they're going to push home with, zero mercy, two on one, oh goodness me, managed to turn it around and survive, but sadly was not for long enough there, poor Jacob, Fought bravely and fell at the last hurdle. Sad, but true. So, Coco Touch. There's Siom. There's Natsu. Blitzkrieg. Marquez. And their opponents... From the Snappers, Dark Templar, Bunter Igel, is a name we've seen before. The Joker, Chuckster of course, and Barrow. So let's see how these guys fare. It looks like they're down. The Snappers are down a man already. That's going to be a problem. It's a 5v4 situation. They can't afford to lose another man. And they're in being enveloped now by their opponents. And this is going to be the problem. Their opponents have got to get in there for a very important pick if they can. But at the moment, they're trying to be as spiky as possible. But they've got to be so careful to get out of position. And that's also there. What's going to happen until finally a number of enemy were killed. And now Coco touches one man remaining. And this is not looking good for him. Oh, but he turns it around. Oh, look at that. And our final murder coming in there from Dark Templar to win that round. Lovely move. So. Still fighting over in arena number one. Renegade there. 4v3 situation. Round table looking to push the point. Oh, Narrow gets murdered. Dommy comes in from the side. And now it's a 3v2 situation. So round table has the advantage. Fine melee coming in. Fine blocking coming in. But sadly, they weren't able to hold it at bay forever. And Dommy with a final kill. So, Komar and the boys ready to take on the Snappers. Bunter Igel. Dark Templar, of course, a name we recognize. And Chuckster, of course, the Emperor himself. So, let's see how they go. Oh, goodness me, they've lost a man. Their opponents have lost a man on the right, and now you can see Snappers 
pushing the advantage, blocking Coco Touch into the corner, and then just basically pouncing on them to finish them off at the end. Going to be a, a hard fought battle for them there. And another round on the board there for Renegades against Round Tables, so we'll have to wait and see how the scores look there. As I'm pausing to adjust myself in the chair to make sure that I don't seize up completely and then end up falling off the chair when the cast is finished, which would be a tad embarrassing. So, let's go and see what's going on with A1. As we're looking at Reaper and Renegades. Oh dear. You can see here Fieta on the left side. So it's a 5v4 situation for round table. Renegade has the advantage. We'll have to wait and see how it turns out. They're looking for that pick. Look at that. Desperately going for that all-important pick. But also when they turn around, they've got to run basically and block on the run while they can. And there's a pick from Renegade into Dommy. And this is uh, looking a dangerous situation. 4v3 for round table. And now it's a 4v2 and it's going to be, yeah, all over there for round table. Renegade's doing a good job of finishing the coup de grace, so to speak. Finishing the job. Oh, it's Achilles. So... Let's wait and see. So, Renegades and Round Table. There's Golden on the left. Taking a hit already. And you can see there that the Renegades are pushing the right side quite heavy. Forcing, oh, Grikey. Gibby gets taken down in the middle. At the same time as uh, Jakob also gets taken down. So they're down a man each. 4v4. Looking for that all-important next pick. Which could change change the round. Now you can see the lines starting to rotate around each other. Look at those try attempts to go in and get the pick. Very quickly parried off or avoided. But they go in for the pick and then try and bait the other into going in for the stab. At which their opponent's friend will come in from the side and get the stab. It's so very important to watch this. And look at them going in for those stabs. Trying not to get out of position. Trying to stay near their friends with spiky safety. And look at them starting to separate out. And they separated out on the left. That's going to be a problem for Renegades. Now round table pushing that advantage of 4v3, they can get one more pick, then it'll be a 2v1 situation for each of the remaining players. And look at this. They're really pushing them into the corner now. Trying to corral them as best they can. There's the second pick, and this is going to be the final end there. As it turned out to be... Wow. That was quite impressive. But it just goes to show you can't rush it. You gotta be careful, you gotta be you wanna try and get the pick, but you also wanna parry away their attempt to pick you back. So Arena One is away again. Crikey, blimey, look at that. Renegades have turned it around. Round table, Dommy trying to look as spiky and as dangerous as possible. And look at that, there's in danger of them getting out of position and now they're being forced back. Look at that, he's moving in with a basically a blocked 
rifle just to sort of corral them and push them back as best they can. And look at this. Fine work being done. Oh, fine. There we go. See, that was very important to snap. Uh, Bay Bagans charged in to try and get the pick, got out of position, got punished for it. Now it's a 3v3 situation. And it's a time, hopefully, the round table can turn it around a little bit. But they've got to get a pick. But they've also got to go for that pick without making themselves vulnerable. As one of their numbers already taken a stab. Look at that. Attempt to go in and get the pick. And there we go. Do you see the way they force two men down on the remaining man? And then those two go after that guy over there. While the other guy basically forms a holding action on the remaining man. Wow. It's all about the Tic Tacs. It's all about the Tic Tacs. Yep, tactics is all, boys and girls. And, you know, maybe... Maybe next time it might be a good idea. I'll be tempted to maybe ask one of the teams if they're recording it to record their team speak because it would be interesting to be able to sort of fold that into the commentary so that we could cut away and you could hear them in the background while they're having the fight. So yeah, I might might speak to Volleyball about that for next time. And then they can provide me with the recordings and now I can provide just an extra bit of flavour to the commentary. Right, let's see. As here, forced into the corner are the Renegades. Fight. Oh, that's bad for Volleyball. This is going to be an opportunity, but they managed to turn it around, kill Jacob, and now it's a 4v3, and they're going to jump very quickly, and that's what they managed to do. They managed to kill Fieta on the way, but round table. So... Let's see. Fieta, Achilles on the left flank. Narrowed in the middle. Jakob and Domi on the right. And they're up against Golden on the left. And Gibby. In the middle is Voluble. Bagins and High Reaper. Oh goodness me, look at that. Wow. And there you go. Another round on the board for the round table against the Renegade. Imagine being at an event if you had a camera that could go all the way around the fence like this. Probably be rather distracting. I mean... Reminds me of those cameras they have in the swimming pools that go along the bottom of the uh, swimming pool and watch the swimmers as they go. And then, of course, that classic dive cam, which is literally just in a pressurised tube, so it goes underwater. And they literally just pull it up on a piece of string and then let it fall at the same speed as gravity, because that's the speed that the diver falls at. So simple, but effective and looks fantastic. Invented by the same man who created the steady cam. Of which I have one. But I'm currently too fat to use. <sighs> oh, never mind. Anyway. I would say right now that... The very bloody Dommy here... And his teammates in round table are feeling quite confident... Against Renegades that they could be in the final. Volleyball obviously... Would like to try and stop that if he can. And he's up against Domi on the right. 
Look at that fine stab coming in and a block by Domi very quickly. And they've lost volleyball on the right hand side. Now this is an opportunity for round table to finish the job. And now you can see them with a 2v2 situation. Domi and Jacob. Jacob. Oh, they've lost Domi and they lost Jacob in quick succession. Oh my goodness. Great turnaround there by Renegade into round table. Wow. That was unexpected to say the least. But a great turnaround. Great play, you know. Good skills. Good skills being displayed. So we're underway. As we're looking. Here as the final numbers are starting to show themselves. You can see here. The picks. Oh, look at that. They've lost Golden on the left. The Jakob with a nice first pick. That's going to give the round table an advantage against Renegades. And now Renegades. Ha oh, they've lost another one. Bagans on the right. Or it's the right center. Now they're being corralled in. Until it's a time for them to move in. And finish the job. And that's exactly what happened. And I think it's fair to say that maybe. Round table may have won that one. Wow. So. Let's take a quick look shall we. See if they've updated it. So. Round table versus renegades. I think it's fair to say that maybe round table will make it to the final. And then obviously Snappers and Coco Touch. So seven to six Coco. Oh wow. That's impressive. Seven to five. Wow. And so the bronze is going into A1. So that will be, so you can see, oh wow, look at that, 7-5 to five against Snappers. That's a turnaround, that's unexpected from my point of view. But, great for Coco Touch. But they're going to be up against, possibly Round Table, probably one of the stronger teams. And then it may be a case of Renegades versus Snappers for the bronze match. There you go, Snappers for the bronze match. And... As he presses refresh. We'll wait and see. Hurrah indeed. So. There's Renegades. And Snappers. So I think it's fair to say the round table will be in the final. Oh heavens. Oh hello. Here we go. Welcome to the final arena. So these guys can get transported down. Or they can just jump. In the meantime, Renegades versus Snappers will be the bronze match. Some people trying to break out, but we'll be watching, unfortunately, sorry fellas, but we'll be watching Round Table versus Coco Touch. Natsu. There's Hypno. Blitzkrieg. Marquez. Whew. Oh boy. So, let's see. So, round table are ready.
No, this is not A1, you fools. Look, they just want to go. Coco, touch it ready. Well, the final's underway. And look at that. Achilles and Jakob killed very quickly by... Coco Touch. Wow, look at that. Who's the man left standing? It was Dommy. Of course it was. Ever the survivor is our Dommy. Obviously, uh, up until this point. So, first round on the board. For Coco. Uh, that's where you can see. There you go. See, Renegade Snappers. Round table and Coco Touch. So, round table always going to be a favourite with the... Uh, the sheer weight of skill that is in this team. And so they're underway for the next bat. And Dommy's died again. God damn it, Dommy. It's the commentator's curse, I swear it is. Every time I watch Dommy, he dies like in seconds of the round starting. But it's not a good situation there. There's Coco touching now 2 0 ahead. And I think it's fair to say that uh, the members of Round Table need to turn it up a gear. Bring it back. Whew. So. Next round. And it looks like Coco Touch Marquez has fallen. And also Blitzkrieg has fallen. And this is what I said about uh, Round Table taking another notch. And there we go. What's he doing there? Oh. And there we go. So Round Table now have a score on the board. It is 2 to 1 in favour of Coco Touch. Hopefully my maths is correct. But, you know, this is the internet, maths, internet, thinking, very, very hard thing to do. Especially on the fly, and, you know, my brain's not what it was. Not that it was much, but that's not the point. Anyway. So. So, let's see. Let's not spectate Dummy this time. We're watching Marquez... And getting pushed back, and he's lost a teammate in the middle there. Oh, goodness me, look at this. This is round table going ham. And who's watching the ham being made? That's Shipe. And also the other spare. There's Darky from Coco Touch. Watching. So, two all, I think it is now. So, definitely, I think round table have the initiative they have the momentum of getting two rounds on the board can they keep up the momentum and the question is whether or not coco touch can break that streak bring it to an end and turn it around for themselves and that's unfortunate they've lost blitzkrieg and marquez on the left immediately they're folding in to go in for the attack they lose uh bagans oh sorry they lost narrowed in the center now, Coco Touch have Achilles and Dommy to deal with in the 3v2. Not an easy combo. Achilles on the left, Dommy on the right. Dommy gets hit once, twice and downed. Oh, wow. That was so unfortunate. Poor Dommy got bullied. Basically, he got slapped in the face and then stabbed in the butt and down he went. Not that he doesn't mind getting slapped in the face, but that's not the point. 
The less said about Dommy and Slappers, the better, really, to be honest. It's a line of questioning or a line of discussion that we don't really want to go down in a uh, in a G-rated um, commentary. We'll try and keep this friendly. So, oh goodness me, look at that. A quick kill into Seom and Blitzkrieg. And Hypno also taken down. And now, god damn it, stop doing that game. I do hate it when it does that. And so there we go. You can see Round Table turning that around. Getting a nice kills. And getting themselves another score on the boards. So I think 3-2 to two now. I'm not 100% certain what is best to it. It might be best to 7. It's very possible because most of these others have been 7. But it could be best to 10 because it's the final. It's difficult to say. So we're watching Fietta from round table on the left. And down goes Achilles. And they lost Hypno from one touch or Coco touch as well. One touch. That's a program though. Oh, goodness me, down goes Narrowed at the same time as Marquez goes down as well. And now they've lost Domi, and it's a 2v2 situation with Jakob and Fieta up against Siom and Natsu. Look at this, the turning and the stabbing. They oh, Look at that, he got in for a very important pick, and now it's a 1v1 situation. Natsu and Fieta, and he's trying to hold that block. In place to force his, his opponent to back off a little bit. Going in for a stab at the ankles. Which can be a very difficult position to block. But yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that. A fine, fine block coming in. And another one going in. Fantastic stuff. To watch these two guys duel it out. For the win of the round. A little bit of an... Argh. Maybe a little bit of a berserker cry. Oh, look at this. He's trying to hold him back with that all-important high block. And the way they're turning and stabbing and trying to get that sort of cycle in and just get the advantage of a bit of momentum behind the stab as they, uh, as they turn around. But obviously with that 17-inch bayonet on the end, they've got a serious amount of reach. But they've also got to be careful. Because if you can turn that reach into a kill, you've got to be careful because the opponent may parry that reach away, chamber it basically, and go in for a kill. And he went in for a kick and he got punished. Wow. And Matsu, Natsu is going to be on a wing and a prayer about that, winning that round. Just fantastic. Fantastic stuff. So, let's see. There's Hypno. Face we remember. There's Natsu. Because they're now facing off again. Equal numbers. 5v5, look at the way that the centre is flowing left to right to try and keep the centre together. And it looks like on the right hand side they've lost Sion from Coco Touch. And they've now lost Marquez and this is going to be round table's chance to go in there and finish it off. And that's exactly what happened. Wow, who's that watching? It's Geher. From round table. And there's Sion who's just been teleported down. It's raining Napoleonic Wars players. So. There's Jakob. Looking handsome as always. Look at that. Narrowed with a nervous energy ready for the off. Achilles... Quiet, pensive, Fieta, also the same. The nervous energy that is Domi and Jakob together. The dynamic duo over here on the right flank. 
Can they bring it home for their team? As watching are the replacements for both teams. Quietly. And we're on the way. And you can see, look at the aggressiveness. Oh, that's bad. Domi just got taken down by a teammate. Jakob team killed him. That's going to be a major problem now. And the Jakob is derping out. He's going to, and he gets a pick, a lovely pick into Marquez. And now the question is whether or not Roundtable will be able to push the advantage they have. A 4v4, a 4v3 situation, I'm sorry. And now they can start pushing in. And getting those all-important picks as they go in. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That was beautiful. Man went in for the pick. Dodged out. His opponent went in for a pick. And his teammate on the right-hand side dived in and dealt the stab and the kill. That was just beautiful to see. Absolutely beautiful to see. So. Round table currently, I think, leading. I've lost count because... I don't have a notepad here and, you know, counting in my head, you've seen, you, you know what's in my head, there's nothing, there's nothing there to stop figures just falling out my ears, but never mind, we'll learn soon enough. And it is now the final that is left. Oh, look at that. Achilles on the right-hand side. Taken down. Fieta now also finished off. This is going to be a problem for round table. Can they pull it back? It's going to be Domi fighting for his life. And sadly for them, it was not to be. Coco Touch pushed the advantage. Murdered everybody involved. So let's just see if they've done the Renegades versus Snappers battle. 7-5 to five Renegades. So Renegades takes the third third place. And obviously Round Table and Coco Touch are fighting it out to be the winners. 5-5 five, five, apparently. Wow. Holy crap. This is what you get when you get two teams of incredibly skilled melee players up against each other. With the foremost of tactics and teamwork. Oh, very good. Look at that. Blitzkrieg and uh, Marquez go down on the left flank. Immediately, you can see Roundtable folding in to take over the remaining members. And literally going in for the stab and the grab. Hypno and uh, Siom there taken down. And so it's 6-5 to five in favour of uh, the table round. Oh, yes, the round tablers. Fieta and Domi. Oh, no, Achilles, I should say. Sorry. Fieta and Domi are actually... Actually, it's Jacob and Domi are on the right flank. We're not going to follow Domi because every time we follow Domi, we get him killed, like, right at the start of the round. So, as you can see, they're a little anxious to get involved. You know, clearly the line doesn't necessarily mean anything. They want to get in. They want to get the advantage as quickly as they possibly can. And look at that. Natsu taken down. Hypno taken down. Jakob finished off. Domi finished off on the right flank. And immediately this is going to be a serious problem. We'll have to wait and see. as a stab going in. Into Marquez and Coco touch Blitzkrieg. Got team killed by Marquez. That's, yeah, that's a definite feck. Yeah, he's not going to be happy about that. And so that's now 6-5 to five in favour of round table. And that, unfortunately, could be a team kill that could have caused a problem for them. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But God, look at this map. Isn't it great? Why? I don't know why they don't just give them a ladder to go down, you know? A ladder that just goes down there like that. So they can walk down it without dying, but, you know, whatever. That is not a reason why. Oh, it looks like they may be needing a spare here. There may be Darkie moving in to spare them. As we've got Blitzkrieg. 
and Marquez on the left. And I think they're missing a man, maybe. Uh, I think it's 5v5. No, we're okay. Past Jackal's bedtime. And Shipe gets taken down by Hypno. Former teammates. That's going to be interesting. And now we'll wait and see. Because you can see here the... Oh, fine stab going in from uh, Achilles onto uh, Siom. And then Hypno and then Natsu. Taking him down. So they're going to be pleased about that result. And so at this current moment, round table are have the advantage. How long will it last? We'll just have to wait and see. Let's go. Shipe. Narrowed. Whew. Okay. So, round table are ready. And their opponents are ready. Keep an eye, see what's going on. You can see them pushing that right flank very heavy. And they've lost Jakob and they've lost Achilles. And they've lost Gerher as well. It's going to be a problem for round table. They've just lost Shipe as well and Narrowed. Wow. That was a turnaround very, very quickly by Coco. So they pull back another round. We'll just have to wait and see. So, round table are ready. And so you can see here Achilles has replaced Domi on the right. Because we don't want to wear Domi out. Hard work doing the melee. There we go. Look at that. A quick attempt as a pick. Oh, and they push the advantage very quickly. Coco touch. Wow. They turn that around very, very quickly. And that got brutal ever so fast. Just brutal, brutal stuff right there. So, it might be all tied up. Let's wait and see. So, round table are ready. As you can see, Dommy's passed out. Too much cider. Just taking its toll on the poor lad. Bless him. So, round table are ready. We're waiting on Coco Touch. And there we go. We're going. We're watching on the right side. And the middle as well. Look at the way he's flowing between the various areas. And they've lost Jakob on the right. That's going to be a problem because now they 2v1 on the right flank. And immediately you can see round table starting to fold back slightly. To try and cover the fact that they've lost a man on the right. And they're trying to provide as spiky an output as they possibly can. Now they're being moved into the corner and they just lost. Narrowed on the right as well. This is going to be a bigger problem for them. And round table just got finished off there completely by Coco. Wow. So they've just asked for a score. So I'm expecting it to be very close.
So the team's getting ready. Round table the grid to go. We're waiting on Coco Touch. And there they go. And you can see here. So we're watching from the Coco Touch point of view. The right flank is a bit soft, but the left flank is very aggressive. And you can see that Round Table have lost a man already, so they've lost that advantage. Now they've equaled it up with a 4v4, but you can see the problem is, is now they're cornered. And all it's going to take is one pick for the rest of the team to pounce and finish off the remaining member. There we go, that's the important pick. And Sion then gets taken out in the return. So that's a good return pick by these boys. And now you can see Round Table moving out of that block area. And trying to sort of move around and be a little bit more fluid. Oh, that's a problem for them. Narrow gets taken out. And now it's going to be a 2v1 situation, which is what's going to happen. Until finally the rest of them get finished off. And that was the problem. That was always going to be the problem. Because literally you lose a man and then it becomes a 2v1 while the other guy literally just holds the guy there while they wait to finish off the other man. And then basically it's just, yeah, steamroll of the reinders. Oh, hello Spike. Looking very, very, very spiky. You should watch from the top the Spike. Oh dear. We've lost Gura. And then literally immediately Narrow moves into his position. Jakob is there. Domi has returned. Achilles. And Fieta. So Siom. Hypno. Natsu. Blitzkrieg. And Marquez there. Their layout has remained pretty much the same. For most of this. We'll have to wait and see what happens. And there they are. They're away. And we need to keep an eye on the right flank. Because that's where Dommy and uh, his teammate are located. Got to be looking for the important pick. And you can see here. The Coco Touch are being very aggressive on both sides. They're doing a good job of pushing the enemy team back. Sort of corralling them, sort of enveloping them. Oh, that was a very, very dangerous moment there for Coco Touch. And as a result of that round table of now mean to uh, push to push them back and out again. And you can see here the right flank being very spiky. Natsu gets taken down. Now round table have the advantage. And they're going to try and push that advantage, get a few 2v1s, and there we go. Down goes Blitzkrieg, down goes Marquez, down goes Seam, and this is them going to be forcing the issue and finishing the job. So there we go, another round on the board there for round table. Match point. Wow. 9-9. Nine, nine. Holy crap, boys and girls. This is the kind of final that you want to see. This is exactly the kind of final that you want to see down to the final moments. All to play for in one round. The boys have got to be sitting in buckets of sweat. Hands probably shaking. I've played snooker under pressure circumstances and your hands shake. It's just natural. And it's about overcoming them, you know, making use of the muscle memory. It kind of takes over, really. So you don't overthink it. That's the thing. If you overthink it, that's when problems start to happen. Mistakes come to, to the forefront. And you start to second-guess yourself. Quite a few bodies over here. Look at this. All this going on. And Achilles is just quiet. Waiting. There we go. Round table is ready. And we're going to go up high and see what's going on. With respect to the movement of the teams. Here we go. Here it is. They're all to play for. Oh my goodness. Coco Dutch have lost two immediately. Oh wow. Siom. 
and Blitzkrieg have gone down. They've just lost Jakob in the middle. And now this is a 4v3 situation. They're going to push the advantage. Wow. Round table take it. With a dominant final round. Just fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. Coco Touch. But what a... What a display by Coco Touch. An absolutely fantastic display of skill and tactics from them. But obviously, sadly, the final moments, the round table were able to pull it out of the bag. So let's see if they're going to do, are they going to do a medal ceremony or something? Who knows? So maybe they won't be doing this. But either way, it's been a an entertaining evening, that's for sure. With as usual some fantastic melee skills on display. Yep, yeah, looks like everyone's gone. So, yeah, a great display, a wonderful, another wonderful uh, event. And uh, my thanks, obviously, to all the regiments, all the players that attended, all the admins that ran the event, and, of course, the admins that organised it and set it all up, and the map maker for making the map and all that kind of stuff. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching this EGS Season 4 event. And we'll see you again for more Napoleonic Wars at some point.